I gotta show off the knife skills. Everybody relaxed knife skills. What up, what up? It's your boy, Seth Harold, AKA Uncle Harold. And I saw chicken is such an iconic barbecue chicken in Filipino culture. It's done for birthday parties, somebody's Sunday afternoon, and you can inasal anything. Inasal is just a marinade, and the one special ingredient is soda. And then the macaroni salad itself is a play on Hawaiian style macaroni salad. I think you're really gonna enjoy making this at your home. What we're gonna do first is cook our pasta. We're just using elbow macaroni, which is super fast to cook. So we have our boiling uh, pasta water here. Just gonna add a little bit of salt and put the macaroni right in. This is gonna take probably five to eight minutes since it's such a small pasta. I'm gonna give it a little stir so it don't get stuck in the bottom here. So while we're waiting on this, we're gonna go ahead and create our mayo mix. Add a little bit of cream, a half teaspoon of salt, black pepper, a little bit of brown sugar just to give it a little bit of sweetness. And it might look a little wet, but the texture is gonna really come together here. And as you can see, got this nice sheen to it. And that's where you wanna really take it right there. That looks good. We're gonna go ahead and chop up some stuff. So what makes a great macaroni salad for me is raw vegetables is key. The macaroni is already soft with this kind of wet mayo mix, but with the vegetables, it'll give it that crunch that you kind of need. I'm gonna go ahead and peel the carrot. It's really gonna give it a nice color too, but also at the same time, like we said, it's gonna give it a nice texture. I'm gonna go ahead and pull the macaroni out, go right into the bowl. And then, while it's in here, add your vinegar. One secret that a grandma had told me about macaroni salad was let it sit in vinegar after you cook it. This is gonna give it a little bit more acidity and also it's gonna cut through all that fat. And it's just a little technique they've been doing in Hawaii for such a long time, so. I said, f it, let me try it out. And you just put this to the side and let it cool down. So, we'll go right into celery next. I'll just bring it over here. And then my scallions, I mix all the white and the green. You don't have to do it too thin. You still need that texture. And it looks good too when you mix it together. So this is your vegetables. And this is all the stuff you need to get together for the macaroni salad. Go ahead and take our mayo mix. Add our vegetables also. It's simple. Macaroni salad, you can't mess this up. Make sure that macaroni and the vegetables are all covered with our dressing. And you always want to taste along the way. So I want to see where this is at. Mmm, good. The vinegar is really nice. With that acid, especially with the heavy cream and the mayo. Oh man, I'm gonna plastic wrap this and cool it down. All right, so now we're gonna go right into marinating the chicken. First and foremost, ginger and garlic is the base for anything you marinate. I don't care what nobody says, you gotta use these things. All right, so a little piece of ginger, we're gonna take a little spoon, and we're gonna go ahead and peel it. My mom, my grandma used to make me do all this stuff because they were so lazy to do this for themselves, all right? So if you ever have kids and you wanna make food, you just gotta make them do all the mundane things, and then they become chefs. Ginger has a nice spice to it, especially fresh ginger, and it creates such a great aromatic smell to anything you kind of put together. Kind of small dye situation. Put it in this bowl. And then take about three cloves of garlic. Next, gonna push down a little bit because you don't want this to burn on the grill. I'm gonna go ahead and get it kind of mush. And so next, we're gonna prep the lemongrass, take the outer skin off. It's primarily used in Southeast Asian food to give it aromatic lemon flavor. The lemongrass itself is very woody, so you can really just use kind of the upper part. And the way you kind of break it down is you take the back of your knife and you kind of just smash it to kind of open it up, get all the aromatics out of it, and it hits whatever product you're working with a lot faster. Right here. Okay, next, we're gonna go ahead and make our mix. First things first, we're gonna put a little bit of brown sugar, some salt, a little black pepper, and one of our favorite condiments in the Philippines, coconut vinegar. It's an amazing flavor profile. And then, one of our uh, culinary producers got us fresh calamansi juice, squeezed it by hand, so this is made with love right here. Eh? A little bit of that in here. 
So calamansi is a citrus fruit from the Philippines. Let's just say it's like a lime with like a Meyer lemon situation mix. And we use it for everything. That's kind of the citrus for the Philippines. The acidity in calamansi is a little bit higher. We have a lot of fats in our food and vinegar. And that sourness kind of ele elevates the product and elevates the food. You saw that elevate? That's a Filipino shit just came out. You see that? So yeah, you can use regular lime or regular vinegar for this uh, recipe itself. But I think the reason why we're using this now is, for me, it's super nostalgic to like have these smells and have the charring of meat, which just reminds me of like barbecues back in the Philippines and barbecues that my father used to throw when we used to live in the South Bronx and, <laughs> and have the whole building smell like in the South chicken. And everybody's wondering, can we eat? And my father says, no. And then secret weapon, which hopefully all Filipino moms are watching. Yes, we are gonna put Sprite in this dish. So we put a little bit of Sprite that helps carbonate and also tenderizes the meat. We're gonna use about a cup's worth. And the sugars in this also helps give it an extra flavor profile in the marinade. Look at this thing. You can marinate anything with this. I like to use chicken quarters. I love the flavor of dark meat and I love the juiciness that comes out when you grill it with this marinade. I'm gonna put it right in, close this thing air out and mix it up. I mean, look at that, how beautiful that looks. You can leave this in here for a day if you want to, but I'm starving, so I'm gonna let this rock for like 20 minutes, and then we're gonna put it right on the grill. This is gonna be the best grilled chicken you're ever gonna have. Now we're gonna go into the grilling. The most important part about grilling is you have to have a nice hot grill pan to get the great sear marks that you need. So. This whiff of marinade is gonna hit you in the face. Yep. I'm gonna put it down here real quick. You wanna go ahead and pat this thing dry. It helps with the crispiness of the skin and you get a nice even grill mark on your situation. So I've already oiled the grill itself and I'm gonna oil a little bit more of the chicken. Lay down the chicken, skin side first. So in the restaurant business, you wanna get that nice and colorful and grilled marked on, and then that'll be your side that you'll be presenting to the customer. So that's the, always been the way I've tried to done it. Oil this side. When you flip it, it'll be ready to go for you. Oh yeah, baby. Smelling the char, smelling the sugar, smelling the, the vinegar itself. Yeah, that's barbecue. You're cross hatching it. You get these nice grill marks and you just cross it. So, once the side gets a nice char, just place it on the sheet tray and turn this off. And then we're gonna go ahead and make our natto butter. This is just a great way to give a nice color to the chicken and also gives it a great nutty flavor. Now, natto is a natto seed. In Mexican culture, is achiote. For us in the Philippines, we use this a lot to color our food and also the natto seed gives it a nice nutty kind of burn the flavor profile to these dishes. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a butter. First we're gonna have some room temperature butter, a little bit of the natto oil, a little bit of salt, and then these um, beautiful calamansi, the citrus that we spoke about earlier, fresh. I'm gonna go ahead and squeeze it. Go ahead and mix this. I've never cooked Filipino food like this in, uh, in my professional career. Having a chance to put Filipino food on the map and being able to do these things on you know, Bon Appetit's platform, but also on my own career and trajectory is, is it's kind of exciting and also a little bit uh, daunting because a lot of people are gonna be looking at it and being able to you know judge kind of what you're doing and stuff like that. So we gotta give praises to the elders you know, for passing out their knowledge and passing it down to us and making sure that you know, we're doing all the right things. So we're going to put it in the oven at 350 degrees for about 35, 40 minutes. Oh, I, shit, I, for, I forgot my cake tester. You got a cake tester? I got a cake tester. I'll show you this little trick. Ooh. It's called burn your lip trick. Okay. <laughs> so yeah, now we're going to go and check on our chicken. Woo! Look at that thing. Usually you can check it with your probe thermometer at 165, but in professional kitchens, we use a thing called a cake tester like this. This is what the pastry chefs use to stick uh, into cakes to see if, if it's done or not, if there's any kind of 
wetness on the on the batter itself. So the savory side took it from them, and then we started using it for our steak. So what would you do is you stick it inside of your uh, of your steak. You would feel it under your lip or in your hand. Scorching hot. It's well done. Like a medium heat is medium, and then like a mid rare is kind of like to a body temperature. So we're gonna do the same thing with our chicken, right? So what you wanna do is for chicken thighs, the cartilage connecting with the thigh and the chicken leg itself. You just wanna hit that, and then you wanna feel it. Yeah, see, it's hot as fuck. That means it's cooked all the way through. And the thigh too, yeah, that's hot. All these chickens are ready. Awesome. What I'm also gonna do is grab the mac salad. It's been cooling this whole time. I'm gonna give it a little mix. The mayo and the cream solidified a little bit, and it's covering every single kernel of macaroni. Grab your chicken, and I like to save that. I don't have to buy the juice right there. And then we're gonna hit it with a little bit of hold on salt, salt kernels. I love it. I love it. I, I always finish everything with that, even pastries, huh? I'm a three-piece man kind of person. Oh my goodness. That's it. And a salt chicken with macaroni salad. This is the best part of the day, all right? You get to taste your hard work. First, I want to taste the macaroni. No matter of fact, I'm getting a piece of chicken because my mouth is watering. Mmm. That's good as f up. I'm not saying that because I made it, because uh, it's so juicy. The natto butter is amazing. Let's try it with the mac salad. Mmm. Get texture from the vegetables, the mayo. And the vinegar, wow. You can really taste the vinegar and it cuts through all that fat. It complements the chicken and it's, it's such a great balanced dish. This right here, if you cook with love and you cook with flavor, people are gonna love it. Like we always say, never forget where you come from, otherwise you become a asshole. South Bronx all day. Peace.